everybody. I hope that you can hear me. Um, I'm just uh, titrating my setup so I can see if any of you are on video and some of you are very brave and happy to, to show yourselves. So hello, thank you for joining me today and uh, I'll, I'll as usual be on the lookout for any cats that choose to join us. Um, also you may want to also feel reassured that um, your videos don't get recorded so um, you're just showing them to me now but it's not in any recording that uh, follows up from that just in, in case you're um, considering that a, a potential uh, concern. So let's move on to talk, whoops, a bit too far, about today's topic. Does my cat have kidney disease and how can I know? Kidney disease, any of you that know me will know that uh, feline kidney disease is a real passion of mine as a topic. Um, and that's for a number of reasons. It is sadly um, a, a common condition that cats can suffer from. So that's one reason why it's important for me as a vet to know about it. But the good news, as far as I'm concerned, is that every every year, sometimes even every month, we can say that there are advances in our understanding of this disease in terms of how it affects our cats, how we can best diagnose it, how we can best treat it. So it is an example, in my opinion, of something where um, veterinary involvement can really make a massive difference to length of life and quality of life um, of cats affected by this disease and whilst no one wants their cat to have kidney disease um, it's certainly I think much better situation now than it was 5, 10, 20 years ago there is so much more that we can do so if any of you are worried about this as a topic I hope that um, through this series of, of uh, webinars that I'm going to deliver on kidney disease I'll be able to reassure assure you. And the first one is obviously really an introduction. So uh, when should we as carers be worried about the possibility of kidney disease in our cats? How can we know what to look out for? So what I'm going to do in the next, it's probably going to be about half an hour again, is talk a little bit about what kidneys do, where they are in the body, uh, what happens in very general terms when the kidneys are damaged and then move on to really focus on what signs of kidney disease we as carers might spot in our cats um, and finish up with how vets diagnose chronic kidney disease. So today I'm not going to talk about treatment. If any of the questions move into treatment, I'll be happy to deal with that. Um, and I would like to say as well, thank you to anyone who submitted ideas and questions in advance of today. So I very much had those in mind when uh, finalising my slides. Um, if I don't cover all of your questions in the presentation, um, then I have got your notes to refer to at the end and hopefully we'll pick up then. Uh, but also feel free to ask uh, any additional questions as well. So firstly, where are the kidneys? Well, you probably know for yourself that the kidneys are uh, uh, in your abdomen, in your uh, tummy. And this is an x-ray of a cat lying on its side. So imagine your cat sort of lying stretched out on its side. Um, and this is what we would see if we take that uh, abdominal x-ray. And if I now superimpose over that picture, some text that tells you what you're looking at. You can see that uh, next to the chest, so at the very left hand side of the picture, we have the liver um, and that is just behind the diaphragm uh, underneath the rib cage and the ribs you can see as those white stripes. Bone shows up as white. Uh, anything that is air filled like lungs is black and we can just see a little bit of the lungs on the very left hand part of this image. At the top of the image, you can see the backbone, the spine, um, and then below that, you can see I've written kidneys. And in fact, if I uh, just advance a little bit more, um, I've outlined the, the two kidneys. They are on top of each other on this image. So it's a, you can't see um, as clearly the individual outline of each of them. If I take that away, hopefully that will just make that a bit clear. You can see they are bean shaped organs and they're lying on top of each other in this view. And we've also got uh, the stomach uh, loops of bowel um, as well, also visible there. So that's where the kidneys are. And normally we're born with two kidneys. 
And the main function of the kidneys, which again, you're probably very aware of, is excretion of waste products. So they're very, very helpful in processing the blood and getting rid of the waste. And the waste goes to form the urine, which travels down to the bladder where it's stored. And then, of course, when, when they're convenient, uh, our cat will urinate and empty their bladder and that gets rid of the waste from their body. So in a very basic terms, waste excretion is the major function of the kidneys. But as this slide probably makes obvious, there are quite a number of other functions that kidneys are also uh, required to do. So they excrete normal products of, of protein breakdown, that's the top one, um, but they also excrete drugs, um, hormones that it, within the body, so other substances. Um, they're very important in regulating hydration status, so whether we are, um, obviously we don't want to be dehydrated, the kidneys obviously stop us being overhydrated as well and look after us if we are uh, becoming a little bit dehydrated to preserve any fluid in the body. They're also important for regulating normal levels of blood salts, things like sodium and potassium, um, also regulating the blood acidity levels, which it's very important to stay within a very uh, narrow parameters blood pressure regulation and lastly there are a number of hormones which are either produced in the kidneys or have an action in the kidneys that's very important in the body. So one example would be a hormone called erythropoietin and this is a hormone that stimulates the bone marrow to produce red blood cells and erythropoietin is produced in the kidneys and this is one of the reasons why actually if you have kidney disease you can uh, become more vulnerable to becoming anemic having a lack of red blood cells, partly because of that lack of erythropoietin. But because of all the other functions that kidneys are doing, there are a number of other consequences that can happen if we have kidney disease. Um, and that includes a buildup of waste products in the blood, which can make our cats feel quite unwell and can have harmful consequences internally as well in terms of, of uh, progression of the disease and how the cat feels in other ways, for example, help making them feel sick, lose their appetite, all those uh, signs of kidney disease that we'll talk about a little bit later. Dehydration is also quite common as a consequence of kidney disease because the kidneys are no longer able to, if you like, hold fluid within the body or cut down what they lose into the urine. So dehydration becomes an issue. Problems with blood salt levels, blood acidity levels, blood pressure, um, and related to those hormones, um, problems like anemia that I've just mentioned. So there are a lot of, unfortunately, a lot of really serious potential consequences of kidney disease that can be seen. In any individual, you may have just you know, one or two of these as an issue. It's not always the case that everything is affected, but of course some unlucky cats or cats with very serious disease may be affected by several of these um, at, uh, at the same time. So what also do I mean by the term chronic kidney disease? Because this is a term you'll see used a lot by vets and, and in articles and books on this subject. Well, the word chronic means long term. So uh, chronic means that the condition has to have been present for several weeks or longer. So that's the first part of that explanation. Kidney disease is fairly self-explanatory, disease affecting the kidneys. Um, in the past, in fact, we often used to talk about kidney failure. Um, and also another term that was often used was renal insufficiency. And you may have heard those terms uh, still used by your vet clinic or in articles you've read. And uh, the definition of each of these shown below. So you can see renal insufficiency um, tended to be the term we would use for milder kidney disease disease that uh, where often the cat would not be showing overt signs of ill health but when we looked at their urine sample we could see that it was more watery more dilute than it should be as a consequence of loss of functional kidney uh, cells um, and kidney failure was the term reserved for those cats that actually had clinical signs of illness so for example the cats that were not eating so well losing weight etc 
and that tends to be seen uh, as you might imagine when the kidney disease is more advanced and, and as you can see from some of the the numerical values on this slide um, we are born with more kidney tissue than we need so you need to lose at least two-thirds of your functional kidney mass before you will see an impact uh, in your patients. So uh, that typically is the point where your ability to produce concentrated urine is affected and you need to have lost three quarters of those functional kidney cells um, before you show any clinical signs of kidney disease. So there's a lot of, of extra there to start with, which is good, but then it does mean once we diagnose kidney disease, um, unfortunately we're down to a, a much smaller functional amount of kidney cells than, than we would like. Like. The abbreviation USG is urine specific gravity and that's a measure of how concentrated or dilute that urine sample is and a key feature of chronic kidney disease is that the urine is more watery, more dilute because the kidneys aren't able to concentrate it and the measurements that we use as a, as a cutoff or the number we use as a cutoff for abnormality in cats is 1035. What's written here is 1.035. You will hear vets you, use the term 1035 it's just I think easier to say so below that concentration indicates that it is more watery than it should be for a cat the other technical term I put on here is azotemia and that means having um, increased blood levels of substances that are normally excreted in, uh, by the kidneys into the urine and that includes um, substances like urea and creatinine. Any of you that have had a cat with kidney disease will be very familiar with talking probably with your vets about urea and creatinine levels and more recently SDMA which is a, a, a newer um, a parameter that we've been able to measure. So if you have a cat with severe kidney disease, they have this buildup of waste products, what is uh, reflected in the azotemia, that increased blood urea, creatinine and SDMA values, in addition to having more watery urine, that urine specific gravity less than 1035. Kidney disease sadly is very common as I've already mentioned so um, anyone who has a cat throughout their life it's really quite common for that cat to develop kidney disease at some point. Um, it's estimated it affects at least a third of elderly cats um, and probably for cats aged 15 and over it's going to be at least half of them that will be affected by chronic kidney disease. It is very very common. There are some known causes of kidney damage um, and they include things like uh, toxic substances. So um, lilies would be a good example. Um, if you have an indoor only cat that eats any plants in the home, lilies are always one to avoid because they're very poisonous to cats. But actually cats are pretty sensible. They don't tend to uh, spontaneously eat them. So when we do see this, it tends to be the younger, perhaps less, less streetwise cats that uh, perhaps get into this issue. We know also sometimes cats will get infections of their kidneys. Uh, pyelonephritis is, is the sort of medical term for that. You can get growths in the kidneys. Um, and there also are some inherited kidney diseases. And polycystic kidney disease, or PKD, is an example of an inherited kidney disease, which can be seen in any breed of cat, but has um, been much more common in certain breeds, particularly Persian cats and other breeds related to, to the Persian. And at one point when um, a study was done in the UK to look at how common this condition was, about half of the cats tested, about half of the Persian cats tested, actually had uh, polycystic kidney disease. So in other words, it was very common. However, many breeders now actually will test for this condition, which you can do by a genetic test. Um, you can also scan the kidneys to look for these cysts, these uh, black fluid filled uh, holes within the kidney and therefore if you do find that in a cat you're planning to breed from ideally you don't breed from that cat you select um, your uh, alternative um, mums and dads that don't have the condition and because it's an inherited um, gene it actually we can we can eliminate it very quickly through breeding programs. So I think it is much less common now. That was one of the advanced questions that, that I received. But I also don't think we actually have a very good figure for exactly how common poly polycystic kidney disease is within the UK. 
most cats that we diagnose as vets with chronic kidney disease actually we we can't tell what's caused it when we make the diagnosis because what we're we're diagnosing is the end stage of of whatever has gone before um, exceptions to that definitely exist that the cystic kidney disease is very visible on ultrasound um, and tumors are often very visible on ultrasound but the majority of cats with chronic kidney disease have just what we call an end stage um, kidney by the time we, we're diagnosing it and we can't actually tell what the cause of it was. So very importantly, how might you spot signs of kidney disease in your cat? Well, there are a number of things to look out for and where I've included a number in brackets as on this slide and some of the subsequent ones, this is showing some data from a survey that I did through the Vet Professionals website a few years ago. Um, and if any of you did contribute to this survey, this is definitely a good opportunity for me to say thank you very much for your help with that survey. We had 859 owners of cats with chronic kidney disease uh, contribute to this study and what I've recorded um, in acknowledgement of that study here is the proportion the percentage of, of owners who spotted this sign in their cat before their kidney disease was diagnosed and the most common uh, sign of kidney disease spotted by an owner was an increase in thirst Although you can see it actually is only 54% of owners, so many owners did not notice an increase in thirst, which is uh, possibly because cats are um, often going outside, drinking from water sources, not in the home, and it might be difficult to know exactly what they're drinking, um, and they may have multiple water bowls within the home as well. But certainly if you see your cat appearing to be at the water bowl more often, or you know it's actually consuming a larger volume of water, because you're having to fill up the water bowl more often, um, then this would be a concern. And whilst kidney disease is not the only cause of an increased thirst, other important examples of, of illnesses that can increase thirst, thirst would include diabetes, diabetes mellitus, and also hypothyroidism. Um, but kidney disease very, very importantly on that list. Um, and I've put some information here, if, if of interest really, that um, if you want to try and measure how much your cat is drinking at home, um, then that can be useful information for your vets in that the, the magnitude of a thirst um, is uh, often a bit different with some illnesses compared to others. Uh, for example, cats with diabetes often are extremely thirsty, so they might be drinking half a litre of, of water a day, which is an awful lot for a cat to drink, whereas cats with hypothyroidism the thirst doesn't tend to be as dramatic but from my perspective um, you don't actually need to measure it for it to be a worry if you think your cat's drinking more than is normal for them then that is enough in my opinion for you to have a legitimate concern um, and talk to your vet about what to do next and, and a, a key next step uh, that's really helpful is actually to collect a urine sample if you can so we'll, we'll come back to that a little bit later Weight loss is another really common indication of kidney disease, but also can be a common indication of many health conditions. So again, it's not diagnostic on its own for kidney disease, but it does tell you that there is something to worry about. Weight loss that occurs with kidney disease often is very slow and gradual. Um, so it can be really difficult for you to spot because you're living with your cat and seeing it every day. Um, and this is why I am quite a keen advocate for monitoring weight in cats and particularly as they get older just monitoring a little bit more often um, so that you can see if anything is changing that uh, perhaps might not be obvious in other ways. So I've put some general guidelines on here in terms of frequency of monitoring. Um, for most healthy cats, you know, once or twice a year is more than adequate. But as you can see for the older cats here, particularly I think when the cats um, get into their teenage years, they're very much, I think, is a justification for monitoring body weight a little bit more often, potentially every three months as I've written here. And of course, if you're at all worried, then it's a very easy thing to be able to do. And you can get relatively in 
inexpensive scales um, online from companies like Amazon. They're designed for babies, so they're not marketed as cat scales, although well, some of them might be, um, but if you just look for paediatric scales, they, they weigh up to 20 kilos, so you can use them for other animals as well. And I think uh, often you can get them for 30 or 40 pounds, so they're not um, horribly expensive and can be a really useful addition to the household in terms of, of monitoring. When to worry? Well, if you can see there's a downward trend, as in each measurement is a little bit lower than the one before, then that is an indication to be concerned. Even if your cat's current body weight still is healthy, um, if you can see that it is incrementally going down um, and you're not doing anything to actively encourage weight loss in your cat, then in my opinion that, it, that is grounds for concern. The other thing you can do, and I talk to vets and vet nurses a lot about, is you can, if you have some intermittent readings, you can actually look at, well, what percentage weight change has happened? What percentage of weight has my cat lost? And I've put some, some guidelines in terms of how you interpret it on this slide. But firstly, to calculate percentage weight change, you have the difference in weight. So um, last time uh, you subtract today's weight from the previous weight then divide that by the original weight and multiply by a hundred percent and so for solo here uh, he weighed four and a half kilos six months ago now weighs 4.2 kilos so has lost 0.3 kilograms of body weight and then 0.3 divided by 4.5 is our calculation multiplied by 100 percent and he's lost in fact seven percent of his body weight seven percent of body weight 0.3 kilos what you know how significant is that well if we compare that to an adult person um, then actually seven percent of your body weight is a lot to have lost. So if you're a, someone who weighs about 65 kilos, about 10 stone, just to make the maths easy, then a 7% body weight is probably about 10 pounds. So it's a huge amount of weight for a person to have lost. You don't, your weight does not fluctuate by that much day to day. And therefore, uh, we can make the same sort of uh, judgments as well with our, our cats in terms of the significance of that weight change. So I'm, I apologise if you've seen a small child. I've not got a cat in the room with me, but I've got a child skulking in the background. So um, this paper, I think, is also a really interesting one to look at with respect to weight loss in cats. This is a, a, a veterinary journal, so don't be put off by the very text-heavy uh, screenshot here. But um, in this study, some researchers in America had access to clinical data from a huge number of cats, uh, 569 cats, where chronic kidney disease had been diagnosed. And one of the key findings was, uh, as I've highlighted here, that weight loss was a really good as in helpful indicator that there was something wrong and you can see that these cats had lost a median of about nine percent of their body weight in the year preceding diagnosis of kidney disease so a huge amount of weight and in fact when the researchers looked back at previous weight records they could see that weight loss had been going on for some time so probably it hadn't been acted on uh, in that period of time uh, because um, the, the cats perhaps didn't seem ill in other ways and perhaps uh, the, the cats were still adequate body weight overall. Um, however, the key message for me really is that um, weight loss should not be ignored. So looking at uh, trends in weight uh, measurements can also be helpful. Um, and as I mentioned, if you can see that there is a downward trend in weight, then even if it doesn't seem very dramatic, I would always take that seriously. But again, if you look at individual changes in this example of Louis, you can see that actually the percentage weight loss uh, was always quite high. He was being weighed certainly initially probably every three to six months. So the sort of thing that you might be doing in your cats and home and you can see that he'd always lost more than five percent of his body weight so quite significant amounts of weight and that whilst perhaps some of those changes 4.1 to 3.9 might not sound a huge amount really in a little cat um, it is a lot 
Moving on from weight loss, um, the next thing which really relates to the increased thirst is that 40% uh, of owners in, in the survey we did said that they spotted their cat was passing a larger amount of urine per day. Um, and that if you have a cat that uses a litter box might be something that you can keep an eye on at home, uh, depending on if you have multiple cats and whether it's it's complicated or straightforward but if you have one cat as we do currently and uh, if they have a clumping cat litter which is is what uh, we use then it's really easy actually to see not only the number of times the cat passes urine in the tray uh, per day but also the, the amount of urine because the size of those urine clumps uh, they're larger if there's a larger volume of urine produced. So if you're in that same situation and you're seeing your cat is passing uh, a, a larger volume of urine per day, um, then kidney disease would be one possibility. Although, of course, there are other things uh, still to consider. Poor appetite is next on the list. So about a third of the cats that had been noticed prior to their diagnosis of kidney disease. So if you're finding your cat is just seeming to get more and more fussy you're throwing more food away and again these think this behavior change may happen quite gradually it might creep up on you quite slowly but if you look back and think oh gosh over the last six months yeah I've, I'm really throwing away more and more food or I'm having to buy more and more of the ultra expensive gourmet delicious uh, cat foods whereas previously my cat was perfectly happy with whatever uh, supermarket brand then this again might be another clue that uh, kidney disease or other health issues uh, should be investigated. Also just trust your instincts in terms of that general feeling of something not being quite right so um, many owners in our survey said they just felt the cat wasn't quite right, a little bit lethargic, a little bit depressed, um, just, you know, not quite themselves. So um, if you feel that yeah, maybe my cat today, it's definitely not an emergency, but things are not quite right, uh, trust your instincts. About a quarter of cats in our survey were vomiting as part of their illness um, and this varied a lot in frequency. Some of the cats it was you know once or twice a week, um, some it was more often, some it was less often, um, but certainly if that's something else that's changed in your cat, uh, consider kidney disease. Not every cat that's feeling sick will be sick as well, so also keep in mind signs of nausea. So if your cat seems a bit drooly or um, seems to want to have something to eat but then can't quite face it it's sort of turning away from the food bowl having perhaps asked for food um, then nausea uh, could be a feature beyond that what else can i tell you well we don't have numbers on these because they're not from the survey but um, other possibilities uh, some of which i've mentioned would include dehydration um, talked a little bit last week about how to assess for dehydration in a cat and this is one of the things we can do where we lift up a bit of skin at the back of the neck and then we let go and it should spring back into place very very quickly um, perhaps not absolutely 10 out of 10 here but you can see going back into place uh, hopefully and then this bottom video the, the, the black cat um, really dehydrated you can see that skin it's just sort of slowly creeping and not even going back into position it's that that cat is uh, very dehydrated is, is, is on a drip to correct that but currently um, very dehydrated Anemia also I mentioned so um, often that can creep up quite gradually and won't necessarily be very easy to see but certainly if you look at your cat and it doesn't have a pigmented nose in other words it has a sort of pink nose or what should be a pink nose and you're starting to think it's looking a bit pale um, then that could be an indicator of anemia and if your cat is comfortable to let you lift up a lip and have a look at the gums um, then uh, in severe cases of anemia you, you might be able to appreciate that the gums look pale um, but this can be uh, I'd say quite unreliable as in um, you know even to uh, the eyes that know what they're looking for so vets and vet nurses um, actually uh, color of mucous membranes doesn't always reliably inform you as to what the cat's blood count is. So if in doubt, the blood count is of course uh, the ideal, but certainly if your cat is looking very pale, that might be a possibility. 
Um, some cats, particularly those with very severe kidney disease, can develop mouth ulcers um, and can have very, very bad uh, smelly breath, very bad halitosis. Um, and so if you're worried again about your cat's breath, dental disease would be another possibility. Um, some diabetic cats as well will have, have bad breath in certain situations, but kidney disease would be another. Um, and again, if your cat yawns and you get a look in the mouth and you see any anything like these areas where you can see the sort of yellowy green greeny, um, nasty areas of ulceration, which are probably quite painful for the, the cats as well, um, then that would be an area of concern to talk to your vets about. Constipation um, is more common in cats with kidney disease. Um, depending on where your cat um, passes feces, you may not actually know reliably whether they have constipation if they go out into the garden, for example. Um, but again, if you do monitor what's happening in the litter tray, um, uh, it's, it's useful to keep an eye on this. Um, most healthy cats will pass feces once a day, um, but like people, there is a great range in what's normal. So if your cat has always done uh, poo every other day and that's fine for them, then obviously don't don't worry but if there's a change if your cat that normally passes feces once a day now it's more like every two or three days then that of course is probably concerning and also if the feces passed appear to be very hard very dry um, then that also uh, is an area of concern and uh, they tend to be hard and dry in, in cats that are suffering from problems with uh, dehydration um, and so that is an indication that the cat also may need some support uh, with fluids. High blood pressure is an important uh, complication of kidney disease and, and um, next month is World Hypertension Day is, is in uh, the middle of May so I'm going to talk about hypertension in May uh, as a separate topic because it's a really important one to be aware of in cats um, but as an aside for today um, it's very uh, worthwhile saying that it is unfortunately quite a common complication of kidney disease with up to two-thirds of cats with kidney disease developing high blood pressure um, as a, a complication of their kidney disease and unfortunately we can't predict which cats are going to develop high blood pressure in terms of of the severity of their kidney disease um, it's just not predictable so where at all possible I would encourage you to talk about blood pressure monitoring with your vets uh, if your cat has got kidney disease so that uh, you can hopefully detect this if it is a problem it is very very treatable but if not treated uh, um, it can cause blindness and um, this little cat on this side a cat called Audrey you can see the pupil the black of her eye is very very large she's got these sort of eyes like saucers um, and she had uh, retinal detachment as a consequence of her high blood pressure and almost completely blind she could see a little bit of uh, light versus dark um, but had lost a lot of her visual ability as a consequence of high blood pressure as I've said it is treatable and actually you often will see improvements in eyesight with treatment um, but of course even better is if you can detect it diagnose it and manage it before uh, any complications like blindness occur so if you're worried from anything that I've said so far that your cat might have kidney disease, what should you do? Well, of course, it's a time to speak to your vet clinic. At the moment, uh, the, today when I'm speaking to you, we're still in the UK under a, a lockdown due to the coronavirus crisis. However, your vet practices are still there and definitely want to help you and they definitely want to hear from you. Many vet practices are now offering uh, video and telephone consultations. Um, there are more relaxed prescribing rules from our, um, our supervisory body, the Royal College of Veterinary Surgeons, so we can make prescriptions over the phone even without seeing your pets at the moment um, so don't think that there's nothing that can be done just because we're we're, the, we're in a lockdown situation there's still a lot that uh, a lot of things that we can do um, and uh, importantly really as well um, as I said at the beginning of this talk there's a lot we can do to help cats with kidney disease so so try not to worry if you're if you feel this is a concern in your cat try not to assume the worst because um, there are uh, many many cats with kidney disease that it's possible to stabilize for years following diagnosis and really have excellent quality of life so um, there's a lot that we can do to support cats with this condition. 
So finally, um, how do we actually diagnose chronic kidney disease? So if you uh, do contact your vet practice, what happens next? Well, most cats where we diagnose chronic kidney disease, it's um, a cat that comes to us where the owner has a concern. For example, my cat's drinking more than previously it used to. I'm worried they're, they're not eating as well as they used to, it's been vomiting a little bit. So hence, uh, as I've put on this slide, the, the sick cat. Um, then we of course will examine the cat um, and look for other clues of kidney disease and, and other illnesses um, after which we'll do some blood and urine tests that are needed to confirm the, the disease we'll talk a bit more about those uh, in a moment and that's how we make the diagnosis of chronic kidney disease looking for that azotemia we talked about earlier on the blood increased levels of, of uh, waste products in the blood and also that urine that's more watery but there is another route to diagnosis as well that's important to mention, um, and that's the, the screening of apparently healthy cats. And we do know that many cats with kidney disease don't show signs of illness until the disease is quite advanced, but that we can often pick it up at an earlier stage if we're proactive in our diagnostic tests. So looking at blood and urine samples uh, in cats that still appear to be healthy, but are, uh, tend to, uh, we tend to focus on the older cats that are at a higher risk of kidney disease there. And this brings me neatly on to um, the ICAT care, International Cat Care Life Stage Guidelines for Health Screening, which are the guidelines that I advocate and encourage other uh, vet clinics to follow as well. International Cat Care um, a couple of years ago launched their Cat Care for Life guidelines and I've put the website at the bottom of this slide so Cat Care and then a number four life.org and what they recommend in terms of um, health checks of healthy cats so this is cats that appear to be fine is that firstly for young cats up to the age of seven years an annual checkup is sensible to have a really good discussion with your vet for the cat to be examined weighed and all the routine health care discussed so very much what i'm sure probably many of you are already following but that once the cat reaches the age of seven, um, what's called the mature life stage, which is seven to 10 year old cats, that where possible, we consider doing more thorough health assessments to try and pick up some of these old cat illnesses um, that are treatable, very supportable um, at the earliest possible stage. So if possible, at that annual health check of your seven to 10 year old cat, it's recommended that they have a blood pressure check that's the BP and some blood and urine profiles to look for common health problems. For senior cats, this is the 11 to 14 year old cats, the recommendations are similar but the difference here is that where possible a six monthly check is uh, a good idea if at all possible and also the other change is that a T4, a test for hypothyroidism, uh, T4 is one of the thyroid hormones, is included in your panel because hypothyroidism affects about 10% of cats uh, aged 10 and over. So um, it now starts to be important to look for that um, in the health screening. And then finally, for the super senior age group of cats, this is cats stage 15 years and over, um, iCat Care recommends six monthly checks again, um, but I actually, uh, I quite like to encourage some sort of health assessment um, every three months if possible. Really, the main things I'm interested in at these checks are the cat's body weight. So if you don't have scales at home, I think a three monthly weight check is a really good idea and also a very detailed history, which is looking for anything that's changed in your cat's behavior or health parameters at home that is giving a clue uh, that anything has changed. So I'm not recommending the whole blood pressure and blood and urine tests every three months. That can still be every six to 12 months according to uh, what looks sensible for that patient. But I think a three monthly general discussion about health and uh, weight check is really useful. 
Urine samples are really very, very helpful in assessment of kidney function. And in fact, to make a proper diagnosis of chronic kidney disease, you do need urine as well as blood. Um, and if we are collecting a urine sample in the clinic, we will often do a procedure called cystocentesis, which is where we use a needle and syringe, as shown in the top picture, to, to collect a sample. That was a sedated cat, hence uh, lying on its side um, in that photo. Um, but it is a procedure that's it's very straightforward forward in a, a totally conscious cat as well. And the key things we're looking for in our urine sample are how concentrated or dilute is it uh, as the, the first measure. Um, if we do diagnose kidney disease, then there are other tests in the urine that are helpful, looking at the amount of protein there, looking at um, for infections, for example, and also ruling out other illnesses like diabetes. But the first step is, is that concentration test uh, mentioned earlier on the urine specific gravity, USG, um, and uh, we've measured that with a, um, a, a little piece of kit called a refractometer. And what we're looking for is, if possible, a USG greater than 1035, meaning the cat can produce concentrated urine. If it's less than 1035, then kidney disease is definitely a possibility and uh, further tests are, are indicated. A home collected urine sample is perfectly adequate for the initial tests um, and this may be something you've done before. It's generally actually quite straightforward, particularly in elderly cats that are often using a litter tray in any case. The difference is compared to a normal urination in the litter tray is that you need um, either an empty litter tray or one with a non-absorbent cat litter in it. And there are a number of different non-absorbent cat litters that range from these plastic beads like cat core through to hydrophobic sand, which looks like sand. But uh, when the cat urinates, it just sits in a puddle on top of that sand and you can collect it um, and hand it into the vet clinic for testing. There is a free download um, on the Vet Professionals website. If you look at the top menu of helpful info and then go down to the free downloads, um, you need to, to register or log into that section of the website, but there's, there's no charge to doing that. It's just so we can see what people are interested in, in looking at. Um, and then you can uh, download the, the relevant documents, including this one. And then the other part of the diagnosis is, of course, the blood tests and looking for, in particular, increased levels of these waste products that are normally excreted by the kidneys. So that's substances like urea, creatinine and more recently SDMA, uh, which is another biomarker that's excreted by the kidneys and uh, uh, has some advantages in terms of early diagnosis of chronic kidney disease. And looking at uh, seeing an increased amount of these substances in combination with our more dilute urine is what gives you a diagnosis of kidney disease. Beyond these parameters, there are other elements of the blood test that are also very helpful in our cats with kidney disease. For example, looking for anemia, problems with blood salt levels, uh, evidence of dehydration or infection. So it is useful to do a, a broad panel. But in terms of making that diagnosis of CKD, it's the looking for those increased waste products and that dilute urine sample. So other tests definitely are helpful following that. Uh, ultrasound would be another test that uh, can be extremely helpful. I've just put a few examples at the bottom of the slide here. So again, we, we had a question in advance about polycystic kidney disease and that on ultrasound can look uh, very much like that picture on the right hand side where you can see um, lots of black circles. These are cysts, fluid filled pockets within the kidney um, and cats with polycystic kidney disease are born with these cysts but at the time of birth they're very very tiny you wouldn't see them on an ultrasound but they gradually get bigger as the cat uh, gets older and unfortunately the pressure of the fluid in the cysts kills off the kidney tissue adjacent to the cyst and eventually you have very little kidney tissue which is why these cats uh, develop chronic kidney disease. Um, the example in the middle just shows uh, a more typical CKD kidney where um, we can see compared to that normal kidney where there is an outer sort of grey area, which is the outer cortex, and then the medulla is the, the slightly blacker bit below, um, well, in the middle of the kidney um, and has, you can 
probably appreciate it looks like quite a, um, a defined structure, shall we say, but the middle image um, is more of a more of a mush of grey and uh, that would be typical of a cat with a sort of end stage chronic kidney disease. What does a diagnosis of kidney disease mean to your cat? Well, of course, it's, it's never good news to get a diagnosis of any illness, um, let's be honest. So it does mean that there is permanent damage to the kidneys. And unfortunately, CKD is, is always considered to be a progressive condition. In other words, it will get worse with time. Uh, the best you can hope for is to be able to stabilize it and maintain uh, at a certain level for as long as possible. But ultimately, it, it will progress it will find ways to uh, to get worse and in individual cats the rate of pro progression can be very variable um, and often impossible for your vets to predict so much though you might like to know at the time of diagnosis well how quickly is my cat likely to, to deteriorate it's often not possible for us as vets to say that we just need to do our best and hope for the best and some cats uh, Morgan a good example on the left hand side there um, she had extremely serious kidney disease. Um, she was, uh, had what we call iris stage four chronic kidney disease, which is the most severe classification of kidney disease, and yet managed to live for seven years in that state. So um, she is a, a, an example of where the diagnosis, um, she, well, she really outlived all of our expectations uh, and did very, very well. Um, but it's, it is impossible to predict in many ways. The good news, though, is, as I've already said a number of times, there are every year more and more things that uh, we know that we can do that can make a difference. Um, and uh, all the time there are new medications coming out or new formulations of medication that make it easier for, to, for us to achieve uh, support of cats with kidney disease. And I'll talk more about treatment uh, next week and in the following week in terms of what exactly we can do and what makes the biggest difference. But ultimately, happily, uh, many cats can be stabilized with really good quality of life often for years following diagnosis. So, so don't worry uh, is my number one message. Uh, if your cat is diagnosed with this condition, try not to fear the worst because many cats will, will actually do very, very well with support. So I, I hope that's been a helpful start to the, the CKD series that will continue next week. We'll talk more about treatment and dietary support and all those sorts of things. Um, further resources for you. Um, definitely are on the website. So the screenshot of the website at the bottom, you can see uh, recordings of previous um, cat cafe sessions I've done um, by clicking on the banners there. Um, there's also other educational videos. Um, there are the free downloads that I've already mentioned. Um, and also I do offer a telephone referral service. Um, so if you have a cat currently that has kidney disease or any other medical issue, and you're feeling like you, you would like uh, some specialist advice and support then that is uh, that is available to you and there's some information on that on the website or you can email me and I can explain more um, there is a fee for that but it is uh, covered by pet insurance so um, that uh, hopefully uh, may help a bit with that um, I also do have a book caring for a cat with chronic kidney disease um, which you can buy in print or electronic form and that uh, would complement what I've said today um, and my blog which was written about a year ago on CKD also has lots of useful links so uh, other resources there the ISFM consensus guidelines um, that is the the bottom right hand uh, screenshot if you're particularly keen and particularly if you have any medical background you might find those interesting to look at they're written for vets so they are quite technical um, but I think it's a it's a really good article and it's free to download so if you just do a google search for ISFM consensus guidelines uh, you'll be able to to find that there and at that point, I will stop and um, I would ask you to uh, feel free to ask me a question, um, either unmuting yourself or typing in the chat box, which for me comes up um, under, I think, the more options on, on the uh, top banner. Oops, sorry, didn't mean to do that. But uh, uh, yes, under more options. Um, and whilst I'm letting you have a think uh, or unmute yourself, I will also just double check the advanced questions we got and see whether there are some there that I can answer. Thank you. <laughs>